<clears throat> impromptu live. It's Michelle again. Um, <clears throat> I started working on this lamp again and it dawned on me that this is kind of the coolest part of the process. So I wanted to show you guys how I do it. So if you didn't see this the other day, this is a big lamp um, from Pier One that I bought because I love the shape, but it had a, a really awful faux finish, distressed finish. It looked factory done. Um, and I knew I was going to paint it. So the other day on the DIY paint page, um, I started working on this. And what I did is uh, I've got a base coat of white. It's all very textured, bounced on. Uh, white Swan DIY paint. Um, and then faded burlap. And then I, I pounced in a few little pieces that are, you know, barely there going to show up of skeleton key. But now I'm doing the part where it comes alive and the reason why we do the texture, the reason why I did the texture is so that I can now go on and dry brush and um, you know, smudge it in. Some, some spots are gonna be heavier. I want it to be um, predominantly white with some of the other colors poking through. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, I guess I should see if there's any questions on here bring myself up. So um, <clears throat> I'm using White Swan again. I haven't watered it down. I haven't done anything to it. Um, and I am using a chip brush. This is awesome. An awesome thing to do with chip brushes because um, the ends are kind of, so this is a chip brush. Cheap. I don't know. You can get them for a buck at the hardware store. But there, you're never gonna get a, f a smooth finish with this and the bristles all come out really easily. So I've played around with it and pulled out loose bristles and more might come off here, but I'll be able to pull them out. This is perfect for this. I want my brush barely to have any paint on it and I'm gonna be you know, smushing it in there and wiping it on. I've got a little bit of white swan on my plate and you can see where I've already started this and that's when I was like, oh, that looks so cool. I have to show you guys how I do it. I love doing this to lamps. Um, so, you know, some parts are heavier than others. Can you see the texture? That's what I love about it. And then little pops of blue. I haven't finished it. Um, so I'm gonna start doing the bottom. I'm just gonna show you how I kind of rub it in. You can't make a mistake with this, you guys, because even if you get it on too heavy, you just keep going back in and pouncing and dry brushing with different colors. Okay, so I'm just putting it on my plate. I'm barely touching anything and I'm not gonna press hard. I'm going to, I've got the camera in a different place than usual, trying to see. And it's all that texture. We created all that with a DIY paint. All right, and I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna kind of smudge it on and, and press my brush in there. You wouldn't wanna treat a good brush like this. That's another reason these are awesome. Um, I like kind of directional things and my strokes when I'm painting. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to want this to be predominantly, uh, white, but what I want to make sure you can see is all that texture. I love this. Love, 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 love. It kind of reminds me of um, some concrete things like that get cast, like the bird baths and statues and things like that. Only you could layer this and do it any color you want. Um, you could do it with grays and cool tones. You could do it with beiges and neutrals. Um, it is just, and it's very forgiving. So, it's, so if you have, I've never done it on a piece of furniture per se, because it does kind of look stone. I've done it on lamps and smalls, um, but it's very forgiving. If you've got something you're trying to cover up, a crack, a stain, whatever, um, you just keep playing with it. And kind of the more you work it, the better it gets. Hi, Catherine. Doesn't this look cool? You guys, um, I hope I took, I had a picture of this. I hope I did before I started doing anything to it because it was pretty bad. And um, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time on it when I started on it this week on the DIY paint page because I got distracted and started talking about stuff. But um, it really is just, it's so different than it was. And it's not hard. All right, let's see. Let's bring you guys up. You're seeing a real messy part of my workshop back here. Hi, Pat. Some of you guys, some of you guys are on here as much as I am. <laughs> I, 
appreciate it. I, I sometimes think I'm driving people crazy because I, if I'm here and I'm working, I'm working on so many different things um, at a time. And sometimes I forget the camera and I just kind of crank them out. And I started this without you guys, but then I thought, oh, this is like one of the best techniques. Now I don't see how, whoops, no. It's, oh, I got it kind of heavy there. That's okay, I don't care. I'm gonna have some spots. I also just got a hair. I'm just gonna, these brushes shed like crazy. You know, I don't use these on furniture. I use these for shellac and for bin because I just toss them. But you just really just scrub it in there. I love, 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 love. All right, I'm just trying to fix some of the, some of it on top here where I didn't love it, but I, I pretty much do. Have you guys ever tried this? I'm not good at the kind of dry brushing on things where um, some people do where it looks like in straight lines. I, I can't do that. I get a little bit too kind of OCD about it and it never comes out straight. But the textural kind of dry brushing, I think that I've, uh, you know, kind of mastered my own technique and really, really like the effect. Um, these brushes also splash paint, as I'm noticing on my iPad, which is now starting to get covered with splashes of paint. Can you see the little peaks of blue that I put in? So there's barely any paint on my brush and I'm just kind of jamming it into the crevices that we created. Every which way, no right or wrong, which is why this is an awesome technique. Oh, just yummy goodness. I gotta get down lower and I don't know how you guys are gonna be able to see that, but I haven't done any of the base yet. Hmm. Let's see. Part of me feels like I, I could lay it down. That texture is, I love the texture. That was the whole point of this. I love creating the texture. Okay, and it's not even wet. So let me see if I can do this without uh, dropping anything or breaking anything. It's kind of heavy, so I, I definitely don't want to be holding it up with my arm. Let's do this. Here we go. There we go. So I'm just gonna dab onto my plate. And when I first touch it, I barely touch it because sometimes I accidentally get kind of like a blob on there. All right, but I want it, and I don't want to really drop a blob. Look at that. Oh. Isn't that just so beautiful? Um, I also, I think it could also use some shadowing. So I might go in in a couple places and put in some dark. And then if it's too dark, I can whiten it. Um, but I kind of like catching the, kind, the highs and lows. Can you guys see this part? I have, I shouldn't say this yet, but somehow I've also managed to not paint the lamp cord yet. Not sure exactly how that is. That's a little dark. I might pounce over that instead of spreading it out. You know, not, it's, it's a little more of a clump that I want there. Um, I'll go back in a minute with some of the other color and just keep, keep layering and you get just such amazing dimension. This is why I use the DIY paints. I am a textural person. I'm not really good at, um, well, I can do smooth finishes, smooth, glossy, factory finish finishes, but I don't enjoy doing them. They're really hard, um, I think, because they're just not my thing. But the DIY is perfect for 
this type of painting. I want to see you guys try this if you haven't. Oh, this is also a good way to see underneath because I've got some, I've got a little bit of blue over here. It's a little too dark. This is really relaxing too, I have to say. Just kind of Hi, Colleen. Love it, love it, love it. All right, well, I just wanted to show you guys how this was coming along. And, you know, this will be another one of those projects that I started that you it may be a while before you see it. Um, and I think this is just the best step. So um, go try textural painting with the dry brushing and share it. It is fun, it's relaxing, it's easy, it's kind of foolproof. You just keep adding until you're happy with how it looks. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm going to say have a great Friday and have a great weekend again, but who knows what might happen in half an hour. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Bye.